This was supposed to be the year I got to talk about AI agents, and now I have to do an episode on the stock market crashing and what it means for AI and tech markets going forward. We're not going to talk a ton about stocks. That's just the background. We were trying to get to autonomous workflows this year. We were trying to get to AI doing real work. Let's just look back at January. Even Jensen Huang said that this year was the year of AI agents. That was the pitch. But right now, we're really living through a dislocation that capital markets are accelerating. So what I mean by dislocation is that the gap between AI intelligence and AI distribution has never been greater, and it's getting bigger all the time. And capital markets are putting pressure on exactly that gap. So on the intelligence side, model maker after model maker is accelerating releases. Meta dropped Llama 4 over the weekend. There's a lot of controversy about their open weights and kind of what they did with their weights and whether they overfitted to test results and so on. But the point is they dropped a model. We are going to see more models from OpenAI. We're going to see more models uh, from Google. And Gemini 2.5 is just now getting into product surfaces where it can really be used. Uh, it's in Cursor now, for example. People are starting to work it in. There'll be more drops from Google. I would expect DeepSeek to drop R2 soon. AI intelligence from major model makers is going faster and faster, but distribution drags. And the problem is when distribution drags during good times, economically speaking, businesses have incentive and capital to invest in closing that gap because there's strategic advantage to be had if they can close the gap. So they would invest in technical talent in order to develop the agent infrastructure they need to deploy useful agents. It is still not easy to deploy agents. Simple agents, point and click, complex agents that can handle distribution and routing in a weather-bound situation and handle multiple supply chains at once, not easy. And that's something that is actually a real example that I've run across. Like if you want to deal with multiple uh, widely varying inputs at once and have a good general intelligence model act as an agent, it's a very complex manual thing. If you want to have multi-agent systems where you have some agents that check inventory, some agents that check policy, some agents that are master agents that handle conversation, it's also very complicated. None of that is something that companies are going to be inclined to invest in if capital is constrained. And so what happened in the last 14 days in the stock market acted as a giant bottleneck on the pace of innovation from companies because they just don't feel like things are certain now. And we see these stories with companies saying, well, we're not going to invest in factories, et cetera. But I see it from an AI perspective with companies looking at AI as an investment that they don't see return on this year. And if they don't see return, why would they go after it? And so to me, model makers are going to keep pushing intelligence. Distribution is going to lag. The gap is going to grow. That sounds like opportunity. That sounds like opportunity for builders and for companies that are willing to ask, where are AI uh, builds that we can do that deliver immediate impact to the margin? Maybe it's not a complicated agent install. Maybe it's an out-of-box sassy play that enables you to immediately deploy agent resolve tickets. Maybe it's an immediate voice agent you can pull out of the box. Whatever it is, if it immediately has an impact on margin, you're going to be willing to invest in it, even if it's during this time, because what you need is to preserve margin and operating room for the future. So even though we expected this to be the year of agents, I think it's going to be a year of extremely practical implementation of AI. At the moment, it's going to be all about what drives the bottom line. And so even though the models will keep coming, the strategy to use them is going to be rare and rare. Model diversification has never been more complex. You have Claude 3.5, Claude 3.7, Gemini 2.5. Now you have Llama 4. That doesn't even mention all the open AI models. A board, a CTO, a CEO, they're not going to spend time on figuring out which model is which if they don't have to. They're just going to pick the model that already has a distribution advantage. In many cases, that will be co-pilot for large companies or it will be whatever they've previously installed if they're smaller. 
and they will work with what they have to deliver a margin for the business. And none of this will stop the inevitable march of AI progress from an intelligence perspective. Model makers are super well capitalized. They're not going to the wall. They're going to keep shipping. And so this distribution gap is going to widen and it's going to be an incredible opportunity for builders who are focused down the road a year, two years, three years, because very few people will be building in that space. It's also going to be a real opportunity for companies that do have the capital to invest right now because the competition has just gone down. And so I would say principles for what, what's next, ship smaller, finish faster. You're going to be chasing outcomes. Hype is gone anyway. And look at middleware. Middleware was not a sexy word last year in AI. I don't see model makers investing in it. I think middleware to make deployment easier, to make this model build stuff easier is going to be huge. And so if you're not looking at middleware, if you're not building with middleware, it's a hint, right? Like, I think there's a huge market opportunity there and the lag is only going to make the value of middleware higher. So there you go. That's my two cents on stocks and hang in there and do not check your portfolio today. Let's build.